All right, I got it plugged in and charging. So now the next step is to set up the app and the Wi-Fi to control it with the app. So you down, download the Prosenic Home app. They have a few different ones. I accidentally downloaded a wrong one before and it didn't work at all. But it's the Prosenic Home app. So we're gonna add device. We go to the M7 Pro. Okay, it's obviously turned on. Now you gotta press both buttons for five seconds. Okay, did that step. Now you type in your Wi-Fi password and all that. And connect them to the robot. All right, it's connected. Let's go back to the app. Start to connect to Wi-Fi. Thank Wi-Fi you. connected. All right, you get connected to Wi-Fi. Let's see where this takes you. Use immediately. At 99% battery, so that's good. I can. All right, that's just a really quick demo of how to set up your app and connect it to your Wi-Fi. Pretty easy. All right, we got it set up and fully charged. So we're gonna put it through its first test. And we're gonna do this little room and this little entryway, which I've done with all the other tests. I'm giving it basically the same test as I've done with all the other robots, it's just a pickup test. With some cereal, got some in the corner, and then, you know, some along the baseboards. So this time I'm not doing as much cereal. Just believe it or not, I had people complaining that it was an unrealistic, unfair test, which I don't agree with. If I'm spending $500 to $1,100 on a robot, it better be able to pick up some cereal. <laughs> Let's be honest. That's just my opinion. All right, there's not much cereal laying around, but it should easily be able to pick this up. One thing I did notice while inspecting this robot, almost positive it does not have a sensor built in the bin to tell it when to go back and empty. It's probably gonna be similar to the Shirk IQ in that aspect, but this one is a much bigger bin than the Shirk IQ. So it should be able to hold a lot more and then go back and empty itself. All right, let's get it started. I'm excited for this. I really hope it does well. Here's the app. Not sure why it made that map that quick, but. All right, let's go tell it to clean. All right, now it's in standard mode. As you can see, those brushes this is what brushes are supposed to do. You're supposed to spin around the carpet and flick stuff in front. Not like that Roomba S9 Plus that does nothing. Positioning failed. Regenerating. Positioning failed, that's odd. Maybe I have it too close to the wall. All right, here's the different suction modes. Right now we have it on standard. Now we have it on powerful. So you can see it's much louder. And then quiet. So standard and quiet to me is basically the same volume of noise that it's throwing out. Well, this spin brush has actually spin really, really well on the carpet. I can see that being very good for this serial test. As you can see, it's already mapping the room. We'll see how it does in the end. 
I expect it to be a, a great robot. If it's like I said, if it's on par with this guy and it has a self emptying bin, then I'm gonna be very happy. So far it's similar to the Rover Rock. Looks like it's doing a perimeter sweep first and then it's gonna clean the insides. Brushes do spin really fast. See how it does in the corner. So it sounds like it has a carpet mode to where the suction increases. Either that or it just sounds louder in carpet. All right, so it looks like it's gonna do basically the same exact thing that the Roborock does. It didn't quite do a full perimeter sweep there. Could possibly because it's the first time ever. Um, but the Roborock always has completed the job, even if it was the first time. Let's see if I can pick up all the cereal. This is why I like the dual brushes. It flicks them right in front of the machine both ways, so in case it misses one way, it'll get it the next time. Huh. See how it's kind of passing it back and forth? I think every robot should have the dual, the dual side brushes. I really think that makes a big difference. Like I said, this thing checks all my boxes. Any other robe out there with one side brush would have flipped that out of the way and then completely missed it. So I'm, I'm actually kind of impressed so far. Well, that flicked it out of the way, but it's gonna go over that next. So we'll see if it flicks it out of the zone that it's cleaning. Yeah, I see it did there. All right, so it should be done on these wood floors. So I missed a couple pieces. See how it does on carpet. Got those right up, no problem. It's missing that corner, but that could be because I have the base so close to it. I'm sure that's why. Oh, missed a piece there. That must have hurt me, so I ain't missing that one. Oh, and then it craps it out. I will say I ran this exact test on the Roborock S5 and it left quite a few pieces of cereal. But these are just going, this is going right over these two and completely missing it. Just kidding. And remember, this is on the standard suction mode. So if I had on high, it would probably be sucking up these. I'm, I might do. I'll do that test later. See, it just ran over that piece. Flick that one. Let's see how many it leaves total. So if you check my previous videos, the Roborock S5 and the Roomba S9 Plus both left cereal in the room.
But so far, you know, it's a quiet robot. So the people that have commented that the S9 Plus, that was the normal sound that it should make, there's no way. That thing was four times louder than this. Listen. This is a quiet robot. This is what I expect out of a robot. That S9 was a joke. $1,100 and it is choking on cereal, which is unbelievable. This one's definitely missing a few. But overall, not, not bad so far. I mean, only a few. And I'm guessing cereal is harder to pick up on carpet because it kind of digs into the carpet as it's running it over. Let's check out the map that it's made so far. Oh wow, nice. So as you can see, it, it drove around the perimeter, did the back and forth motion all the way across, and now it's picking up where it missed in the beginning. So as, as far as the mapping, first initial impressions, this is almost dead on what the Roborock is. We'll have to see how well this thing empties itself when the test is over. So as of right now, I'm, I'm actually impressed. I do plan on doing a ton of tests with this head to head. So do me a favor, like and subscribe, please. Really helps us out. Does a lot more than you think. And I definitely appreciate it. I am, I am. Yeah, this thing is, it's doing a very good job. Man, Roborock, you have competition now? I guess it's, I, don't, I didn't hear what it said, something to recharge. So I know the battery can't be low. It must be, it must be done and it's gonna empty itself. So let's see how this thing empties itself. So it's lining itself out and now it's going to turn around and back that ass up and uh, empty itself. See how loud it is. So is it done? So that's pretty cool. Definitely different. So this one, this one has the charging contacts on the front of the robot. And then on the rear bottom, it must have some sort of contact. See, this is the one that charges, and then it's got these two. So these here must communicate with the self-emptying bin to tell it to kick on and empty itself. And then it turns itself back around and recharges. So that's, that's very unique. This is the first robot that does that. The Shark IQ just backed itself on and emptied itself, and that is also how it charged. All right, let's do, actually, let me empty this bin and see if it left any cereal in there or what's going on in there. Dust bin is not installed. Ooh. That's not good. Looks like all the cereal is still in there. Really? That's surprising. Yeah, all the cereal is still in the bin. What is up with that? Let's see if it got any cereal. Okay. I feel <laughs> one, literally one piece of cereal in here. 
Okay, that's not good. What is up with that? Yeah, so that's opened. So the flap is opened. That's a concern. Does the self-emptying bin not work very well? Let's pop this back in and... All right, so I'm gonna back this on. As soon as it makes contact, it should trigger it. I did not hear, oh, I did not hear anything going through that. This might be a major issue. As you see, there's cereal in the dust port. And to me, okay. people might disagree, but if this thing can't suck up cereal that is this tiny, which you know it's going to be picking up if you have a big family of kids around the kitchen table, they're going to drop cereal on the floor. And really, the amount I put down is not unrealistic. That could be one little bowl that a kid accidentally spilt out. And if you send this out and it picks it up, I can't empty it into its own self-emptying bin. That's definitely worrisome. It has. Clean, standard, more. That was lots of stuff. Area clean, we'll test that later. Y-shaped mopping, I'll go ahead and try that because I did not try that on my Roborock, so that might actually put down more water. Deep cleaning, so that just basically means it's gonna go out two times. Click to collect dust, okay, I'm assuming. Yeah, okay, good, so it does have an empty the bin button, which I really like that, that's awesome. I don't think, and you I know somebody will correct me if I'm wrong, I don't think the Shark IQ had that option. Okay, so this should spin itself around and back it up. I really hope it cleans it out this time. I really, really want to like this. If it can't pick up cereal, I mean, and every other. All right, well, that cereal is still just sitting there. I don't know what's going on. After this thing parks, we'll check the uh, dust bin again and see if it's full of cereal. I mean, the port is big enough, as you can see, so it should be able to suck the cereal out. All right. Dust bin is not installed. That's funny. This one tells you when you take out the dust bin, just like the uh, the uh, Roborock. Okay, so it is sucking up cereal each time, but it shouldn't take three or four times to empty it. So that is a little bit concerning. Dust bin has been it has, thank you. Check this again. No, there's, okay, no, there's, okay, never mind. Okay, so it is in here. It's way at the bottom. I can feel cereal. It's got a little bit, maybe eight to 10 pieces. Let me pull out this bag. All right, guys, so. For whatever reason, my bag seems to be like glued in there. So it has pulling up <laughs> this first bag ripped. So there's some cereal in there. I don't know why. First started trying to pull it out with the with the sleeve like you're supposed to. That ripped right out. 
and then I tried grabbing it from this and that ripped off. <laughs> so, this cardboard here, it's almost like it's glued in there. I cannot get it off. I don't know why or what the heck's going on. So I got some little pliers here. I'm gonna try to rip it out with this. There we go. So I don't know why I needed pliers to slide that out, but I did. So well, that's odd. Maybe this just, it's been sitting there for a while, so it, I don't even know, but I got it out and in all honesty, that doesn't bother me that much because it came with two extra. All right, yeah, so it came with two extra. So I'm gonna place this one in, which I don't think that had anything to do with why it wasn't sucking out the cereal, but we'll see. So it was still around the circle just fine. So you just push that in there, makes a seal. Okay, let's close this up. And I'm gonna tell it to empty itself again. You really see that on these robots, they're just the hard plastic. All right, I hope for whatever reason that did the trick. It did suck up that piece of cereal, so that's good. Maybe this bag was faulty for some reason. We'll find out when I pull out this dustbin. If I got the rest of the cereal, then that's great. Charging. All right. Dustbin is not installed. Well, you know what? It got 99% of it, so that's good. I don't know why it took four tr tries. All right, let's throw a little bit of cereal in here. Maybe a little bit more is about what it picked up earlier. All right. Let's pop this on. Let's hope this bin is empty or at least almost all the way empty. Charging. Dust bin is not installed. Here we go. Nah. So there you uh, I don't know. Why? Why is it not sucking up cereal? They fit through the port fine. I don't know. Do you guys know? All right, well, this is just all initial test. Of course, I'll do tests with smaller pieces and see how well that does. Um, I like to I like to try to keep my, all my reviews honest, and I could easily edit out this bag and pretend like it sucked it everything up just fine and everything is great. But I'm gonna keep this bag in here just in case someone else has an issue with the bag. That was pretty. It felt like it was glue down in there, and I had to literally rip it out. All right, do me a favor, guys. Please like and subscribe. And you guys all have an awesome day. There's going to be a lot of more videos with this robot coming up very soon. See you all later. Bye.